And normally, if you take any particular instruction, right, there will be four stages, right? Two stages, as I said, two stages fetching and as well as execution, right? But even in execution itself, you need to get the information of source operand, destination operand, what is the instruction, it has to fetch all the information and then it has to execute it, right? So as a whole, if you see for executing any particular instruction, there will be four phases, right? One is fetch phase, decode phase, execute phase, write phase, right? You want to understand very clearly what is fetch, what is decode, what is execute and what is write, right? For example, if you take this particular operation r1 comma r2 right if you take this particular instruction r1 comma r2 okay first in order to execute this particular instruction it has to fetch this instruction from the memory right it has to fetch the instruction to ir right only if the instruction reaches the ir the execution the fetch phase will be over correct so during the fetch instruction what will happen it will read the instruction right it will read the instruction, it will fetch us the instruction from the memory, right? That is called as fetch phase, okay? And then what is decode phase? What is decode phase? Decode phase in the fence, the, this all three, we can combinedly call this, this is an execution phase. But it has been divided as decode, execute and write, okay? What is it by decode? Decode in the sense, right? We know that only after reaching the IR, instruction register, the execution will start, right? And what is decode? Right, it is the first, this is the step where it will decode the instruction. It will understand what is the instruction we have to do, right? What is the operation we have to do? We have to perform add, okay? It understand we have to do add. So, and then it understand what is source operands, right? What is source operands here? This is R1 and R2, both are source operands. We have to add R1 and R2, right? And then it also, understand the destination operand r2 right so in decode phase it will get it will fetch us all this operands fetching the operands from the memory once again right what is the data of r1 what is the data of r2 what is the instruction which is which we need to execute all this will be decoded it will be fetched from the memory right right so it will understand at the end of the decode phase right it will understand right it will understand what is the operation we have to do? What is the source operand? What is the destination operand? Okay, right. And now it has all the information. What I have to do? What are the? What is the data? Everything is present now, right? Now only it start executing. It's performing this particular operation. That is addition of R1 and R2 is happening exactly in this execution phase. Correct. Right. And what is right phase? After completing, I add R1, R2. The result has to be stored. Right. That particular phase is called as right phase. Right. Right. So, you understand what is fetch, what is decode, what is execute and what is write. Correct. So, if you see this four stages, you need four hardware components. Right. So, what is those four hardware components? That is fetch instruction, fetch unit. Right. And this decode unit. And then you need an execution unit and then you need a writing unit, right? Fetch instruction, decode instruction, execute operation and write results, correct? And in order to interconnect all the stages, all those hardware, you need buffers. Buffer 1, buffer 2, buffer 3, right? And you have to be very clear. Already you know that what, what fetch will do, what decode will do, what execute will do. Right, so buffer 1 will always have the information from the fetch unit, correct? It will get the information from fetch unit, right? So the decoder, what it will do, it will start decoding the instructions, the information which is present in buffer 1, right? And then what it will do, it will fetch the operands, decoding in the sense, as I said, remember this R1 and R2, it will fetch the operand, what is R1, what is R2, everything will be done in this decode phase, right? And all this information will be stored in buffer 2. That is, what is the operation add? Add. And what is the source operand R1? What is the destination operand R2? Similarly, it also has the information where the results has to be stored. That is R2. That is destination operand. Everything will be stored in buffer 2. Right? And now, the execution unit. Right? What it will do? Whatever information which is present here, it will perform that particular operation that is the original operation will take place in the execution that is 
addition of R on R2 will take place here. And the result will be stored in this buffer. Right? Right. Along with that, it will also send the information that we have to say the information in R2. Right? With that information, the right operation, the right unit, what it will do, it will write the result in R2. Right? This is the normal operation of four-stage pipelining. Right? Hope you understand the concept clearly. Right? And this is the other way of representation of the four-stage pipelining. Okay? Uh, as like the two-stage, four-stage pipelining also, you can see here in first clock cycle, instruction one, it will fetch. Right? It will fetch the first instruction at the clock cycle one. At clock cycle two, what will happen? You know that you have four different units here. Four different units. Correct? Right? You have four different units. That is fetch, decode, execute, and write. Okay? So, at a time, you can do four parallel operations. Correct? Four parallel operations. Right? You can see here, at the first clock cycle, it will fetch the instruction one. And the second clock cycle, what will happen? It will decode the instruction one. And at the same time, it will fetch the instruction 2. And at the th third clock cycle, what will happen? It will execute the instruction 1. It will decode the instruction 2. Correct? And it will fetch the instruction 3. And at the fourth clock cycle, you can see the instruction execution of instruction 1. Right? It will be completed. Right? And execution of instruction 2 will be started. Decoding of instruction 3 will be started. And fetching of fourth instruction will be started. Correct? Right? Right. And you want to understand here, right? At the end of the clock cycle, you will see at the end of the clock cycle what will happen. Okay? And as I said, we have two buffers. That is three buffers, sorry. Buffer one, buffer two, buffer three. Right? In order to understand this concept, if you understand one particular thing, you will take only four clock cycles. Okay? I'll just, I'll just take four clock cycles. Just take four clock cycles a lot. So what will happen at the fourth clock cycle, right? What are the information it will be stored, right? In buffer one and buffer two and buffer three at the end of the fourth clock cycle, right? You can see here at the fourth clock cycle, it is still fetching the fourth instruction, right? So the buffer one will be having the information of instruction three, correct? Because instruction three is already fetched and that is already stored in buffer 1, correct? Right, so instruction 3 will be will be fetched and that particular instruction will be stored in buffer 1, right? And similarly, buffer 2, buffer 2 will be having the instruction, you can see here, I'm taking at the fourth clock cycle, right? So you can see here, the fourth clock cycle, right? The decode phase of instruction 2 will be completed, right? And if we have taken the example as add R1, R2, right? So, the decode phase of the instruction will be completed and buffer 2 will be having the information of instruction 2. That is, it will have the source operand, destination operand, what is the operation that has to perform. Correct? Right? Similarly, buffer 3 will be having the result of the instruction 1. Right? Because... At the fourth clock cycle, the execution of the instruction one will be completed, right? And it is in the writing phase, right? So the buffer three will be having the information of the information of the result of instruction one, right? Right. So this is called as four-stage pipelining, right? You got to explain what is four-stage pipelining, and at the end of the fourth clock cycle, what are the information will be stored in the buffer one, two, and three, correct? Right. So as I explained before, right, this is the same instruction, like if, like for instruction, two-stage instruction, two-stage pipelining, the same operation for four-stage pipelining, right? At first clock cycle, what will happen? The second clock cycle, both fetch and fetch and as well as decode phase will start. And at the third clock cycle, fetch, decode, and execute will start. And at the fourth clock cycle, fetch, decode, execute, and write operation will be performed, right? So, this is four-stage pipelining, right? And very importantly, you got to understand what is the role of a cache memory in pipelining, right? And as I said, pipelining is very, very important, right? To improve the performance of the processor, right? And each and every operation, every stage in pipelining, 
depends upon a clock period, right? And it has to complete within that particular clock period, right? And there will be some operations which will take more time, right? If it takes more time, the clock period has to be sufficient enough to complete that particular operation as well, right? And so the time period is very, very important, right? It has to complete any operation within that particular clock cycle. That is very important, okay? And so the pipelining operation will be very effective only if the fetch, decode, execute, and as well as write. All these operations takes same time, right? That is, every operation has to be completed, completed within, within a particular time, right? And that has to be unique. That has to be same, right? If one, one particular stage more time, then it will degrade the performance of the pipelining, right? And this cache memory is very, very important because, right, for executing the very simple, right? If you take a very simple operation, that is, if you take very simple addition operation, add R1, comma R2, right? This is very simple operation, okay? And it can be done very easily in pipelining, right? It will take only very few seconds, right? But in order to fetch an instruction, in order to fetch an instruction from the main memory, right? You know that what is fetching an instruction? Right? In order to execute this particular instruction, it has to fetch from the main memory. If it has to fetch the instruction from the main memory, right, then the time taken to fetch the instruction from the main memory will be four times that of the this execution of simple operation. For example, in if it takes only a few seconds, right? If it takes one one minute, for example, if it takes one minute to complete this operation, basic operation pipelining. Just to fetch this instruction from the main memory, it will take four minutes. It will take four times greater, right? So every time, if it takes more time to fetch the instruction, then pipelining operation is of nearly waste, right? It will it will mean it will not be very effective, right? So to solve this particular operation, to, to solve this particular problem, what we can do is we can use cache memory, right? We already know that processor will have a cache memory and will have registers for temporary storage, right, for faster access, right. And cache memory is very, very important for pipelining as well because, right, if any instruction that is fetched in, is inside the cache memory itself, it will take many fewer time, only it's less time to complete that particular fetching operation, right. So cache memory is very, very important so that it will improve the performance of the pipelining and it will help each and every stage to complete its operation within that particular clock period, right? So the role of cache is very important in pipelining, right? So today what we have seen is we have seen what is the basic concepts of pipelining, right? We have seen what is meant by two-stage pipelining, what is four-stage pipelining, right? And we have seen what is the importance of cache in pipelining, right? So understand the very basic concept so that you can you can able to write very easily. Right? Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video ongal kalar ko rombo useful ayrakko number. Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.